Welcome to the live stream of Barnes Memorial Missionary Baptist Church. Now let's hear a word from our pastor, Reverend Basil Williams. Good morning, family. We are glad to have you with us one more time, and thank you so very much for tuning in with us here at the Barnes Memorial Antioch Ministry that we are asking you to bless our hearts and be tentative and be praying for us that all that we do may be to glorify the kingdom of God. We thank you so very much for the love that you show us and all that you do. And when you join in with us in this service and tune in all across the nation, we bless your heart for the love that you show us when you send us our information. Let us know that you have been looking at the uh, ministry and that you like what you're seeing and we thank you so much for that that love that love means a lot to us because we are doing this to get the word of god out to people that we might bless as many people as we possibly can and we thank you all for being part of this ministry and letting other people know about us and that they might tune in as well and be blessed also so we're going to move on into the service and we're going to ask uh, Sister McIntyre, Deaconess McIntyre, that if she would come and read scripture for us today, and then we're going to have word of prayer by uh, uh, Deacon Rudolph Silva. Amen. Morning, family. Our uh, scripture this morning is going to come from Luke 9, starting at verse 57 and going to verse 62. And it reads as follows. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid thee farewell, which are at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. May the Lord have a blessing for reading and hearing of his word. It is sufficient because my God said so. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 Pray, Dagan. Uh -huh. Good morning, Barnes. Good morning. Okay, let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh, Heavenly Father, for carrying us through last night as we sleep in sleep and rest, oh, Heavenly Father. Yes. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the things you is doing for us and the things you have done. Thank we thank you, Heavenly Father, for being God all by yourself. Yes, yes God. Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord God, who yes. died on Calvary for our sins, Lord God. We just want to thank you for each and everything, Lord God. Yes. Thank you for each and everything you put on this earth, oh, Heavenly Father. We ask you to bless all the sick and shed ends, Lord God. Yes, bless Lord. the ones that's in the hospital, rest home, wherever they might be. They might be behind prison walls, Lord God, but we ask you to touch them, Lord God. Touch them this morning, Lord God, and let them know that you are still in control. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless each and every one, Lord God, that can hear me out there this, this morning, Lord God. Yes, Lord. We just pray that you bless each and every one, and everybody be okay, oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, with all this I ask of you in Jesus' name, Amen. I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. We thank you so much, Deacon and Deaconess, for blessing us with that word, reading of the word and prayer. And we thank you all once again for tuning in. And I want to say that in our wake up we want to say to you that we need to be mindful of what's going on around us a yeah. whole lot of things are happening happening quick around us as we can see that the um, our 
government is um, doing some things that seem to be contrary to the way they ought to be done, but in any event, they are being done that way anyway. In other words, what I'm talking about is that now the information from the hospitals that have been going to the CDC and they have been allowing us to understand and to know what's happening with, with this pandemic. Um, now the control has gone to the White House and we're hopefully that they are going to do what's right and continue to let us know what's going on in our communities and around us. But we do know this, that even if they don't do right, that we serve an awesome and a mighty God, that we must trust him and allow him to do his will in our lives. And we must be mindful of everything around us. So family, please wear your mask. Wear your mask that you might protect somebody else from uh, what germs that you may be spreading and that they might be wearing masks to protect you from the germs that they are spreading. Also wash your hands and um, use sanitizer when you can. Do what's right. Do what you're being told. This, this pandemic has not gone away and we must be mindful of this. And I remind us of this because I care about us. And we need to make sure that we do right. And let, let's be thankful to God that he's blessing us each and every day and that his strength is with us. Continue to do what you know that God has asked you to do and be a blessing to your family, your friends, and your neighbors and everyone that you see. And think about the life that you say may not be yours, but it may be your mother, your father, your grandfather, grandmother. Those things are important, but it also you may be saving your own life. So God bless you. Let us move forward into the word. Today's word is going to come from the book of Luke. And we're going to read from the fifth chapter starting at verse 1. And it says to us, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Lunch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. The, and Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we are tall all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thou word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they uh, began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at, his, uh, at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astound, astonished, and he and all that were with him at the drought of the fish which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand here, Father God, once again to do your will and to allow your spirit to have its way. God, I surrender all before you and say, Lord, just touch me and use me now, Lord. Oh, Lord, I come as I am, a broken man that has been upheld by your spirit and forgiven by your spirit. And I ask you, Father God, that you would allow me to decrease as you increase through me, Lord. 
Allow these words to be words to touch hearts of men, women, and children. That change shall come about. That they shall understand what you would have them to do. That sinners might cry out, what must I do to be saved? And backsiders will say, Lord God, what would you have me to do? Bless your name now, Father. And I give you all glory in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen, 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 and amen. Amen. And I'm going to use for a topic on today, they forsook all. This morning we want to discuss being recruited by God for true discipleship. It is indicated in the word that Peter obeyed Jesus based on his word only. In the book of John chapter 8 verse 31 tells us that then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if you continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed. And verse 32 goes on to say to us and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And the Samaritan scripture that was read this morning teaches us that we must be willing to make Christ the center of our lives so that we can realize all that he has for us and that our growth will be that which is necessary to know him for ourselves. We want to establish here today that there is a necessity for us to become fishermen of men. This story starts by telling us that Jesus is by the seashore and the people are pressing him to teach them the word. The people were excited about receiving the word of God. Isn't it a wonderful thing when you can read in the scriptures that the people got excited about the word, that the press was so great that it even bothered Jesus, that so many people were pushing against them to get to him for he could tell them the truth. Oh, God is a mighty God, an awesome God. Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lap unto my feet and a light unto my path. The people had got a taste of the word of God and wanted to know more. Oh, we ought to get excited about the word and want to know more. We ought to get excited about the word and go deeper into the word. We ought to get excited about word, the word and know that God is our all and our all and the center of all of our attention. Matthew 5 and 6 said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. They knew that Jesus was a great teacher, but didn't know that he was the son of God. There was such a great gathering of these people that Jesus get into the boat with Peter and asked him to thrust out a little from the land so that he could teach the people. Wanted to be able to teach them without uh, having them to interrupt him, to make sure that he's able to, to amplify his voice that many can hear him and know who he is. Then he told Peter after he had spoken to the people and told them what they needed to know, he told Peter to launch out into the deep where he could teach him and the other fishermen of the power of God. Jesus uses his power to show them that even though they toil all night long, that thrusting, that trusting and obeying in him would bring about and bring forth a great reward to them. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding. This reward was manifested before Peter and the other fishermen through the magnitude of the fish that they caught when they obeyed Jesus. We must believe that the same power that was manifested before the disciples will be of uh, this miraculous catch will be with us. We must believe that the thing that we have been searching for, the thing that we've been praying for the thing that brings us peace that, and that will come with all our desire and the need and our needs and our provisions for necessary for survival, the job we are seeking to provide us our livelihood, the business we want to build, that we can become self-sufficient. And every dream is still possible through Christ who strengthens us. Mark 9 and 23 said, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst 
believe all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to those who believe in God, those who trust in him. But we must believe. We got to believe that he's able to do the things that he promised us that he would do. We must believe that there is nothing so powerful and so uh, strong that God can't do it. Nothing impossible to God. Know that he's able to do it if you only ask him and believe it in your heart. Through this manifestation of the great catch, Jesus is able to bring forth the true purpose of this night. And the true purpose was to give the disciples a new direction and a new destiny. He was transforming them from just fishermen into fishermen of men. The disciples accepted this challenge with full commitment. Five, Luke 5 and 11 tells us so. It said, and when they had bought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. This is to say they gave up their past and changed their future. If we understand what that means is they were willing to take a chance on the Lord. They was willing to take a chance that in following him and doing as he had instructed them to do and doing what the words say that their past would be just that. But their future would be brand new. They will be a new creature in Christ. That they will be walking in the newness of life. They were willing to walk uh, away from what they had always done. Can't you just feel this spirit when we talk about this? That when you are able to walk away from what always been there, but what has always given you cover, and you want to leave these things behind and follow Jesus. Oh, you ought to be excited in your spirit when you get to the point of your life when your when your faith can begin to get so strong that you are willing to get out of this place that you know and move into a place that you never been to before. They are willing to do what it took to please God and to follow His teaching. They forsook all the words say. Luke 9 and 23 says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me. Jesus speaking to the people now. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. We as people, God must be willing to, to deny ourselves, to, not to tell the flesh no, to say, I can't be the same man that I used to be. I must be a new man. I must walk in the light and stop walking in the darkness. Yeah. I must take my burdens upon my shoulder. That's my cross that I must carry. And then when I do these things, then I should follow Jesus. Yeah. To be a fisherman man, you need to follow Christ and trust his word. You must be willing to move from your old playground into a new arena. You must be willing to go into strange places and see strange things. But through it all, you must trust Jesus. You can't do it on your own. I think that you got all the answers. You must trust Jesus and move to the place where he tells you the catch is waiting for you. You must learn to be patient and continue your work in the Lord. Your blessing will come. Trust God, it will come. If you just believe and move to the place that he tells you, the catch is waiting for you. You must be willing to give up your current situation and take on future expectations. You must be willing to put your hand to the plow and go forward and don't look back. You must be willing to forsake all and follow Jesus. Luke 9 and 62, which was read so eloquently by uh, Sister McIntyre, saying, Jesus said unto him, No man had to put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. There ain't nothing to look back for. There won't nothing back there when you were back there. Right. It's time for us to move forward All and right. to do what thus says the Lord. Yeah. It's time for us to follow Christ and listen to the Spirit of God and be moved by His heavenly voice. Yeah. When He speaks to us and tells us 
that we no longer want to be in the place that we used to be. We want to be a new man in Christ, a new creature in Christ. We want the Spirit of God to come upon us. We want to take the plow by the hand and move forward going down the road. We need to trust in God and know that God is able to do the thing that he promised us that he would do. We need to know that God won't leave us nor forsake us. And if he bring us to it, he'll carry us through it. We need to know that God has been on our side the whole while. Even when we didn't know him, he was still with us. He still knew us. Our parents, grandparents, friends, and neighbors, uncles, and aunts, and other people were praying for us. And if we didn't know how to live right and do right, he gave us a second chance. All you got to do is choose the Lord and trust in him and forsake all that you have. Don't you turn back. There's nothing to go back to. All that is gone. Your past is just that. It is your past. Your future is all that matters. Move forward. Move toward the light and leave the darkness behind you. Move to our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Do like the disciples. The word said that they forsook all. They put it all behind them and they moved toward the glory of the mighty and holy God. We thank you today and we give you praise. We will ask that Reverend McIntyre will come there and bless us with an invitation. To God be the glory. Amen. They forsake all. At this time, we're going to open up the doors of the church. And it's not a building that we're talking about. It's about the church within each and every one of us. Yeah. At this time, if you're tired of running, if you're tired of just being tired, this Amen. is your opportunity for salvation. Amen. Christ gave his life on Calvary's cross, yeah. not because of anything that he did, but to save us from our sins. At this time, if you're willing to stop running, if you're willing to understand that God is in control, Amen. this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Amen. And it doesn't ask much for it. All he's asking that if you believe that died, Christ died on the cross and he rose again on the third day, you have an opportunity for everlasting salvation. And if, if you're tired of being a sinner, give it to God. Because Christ has already shed his blood so that we could wash our sins away. And it's your opportunity for a new beginning. Will you pray with me? Father God, Master, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I am a sinner. Yes. And I'm tired, Father God of not knowing what tomorrow will bring. Yes. But I know one thing, Father God, as long as you're there, yes. everything will be all right. Yes. Father God, I might take my eyes off of you, but I know that you never take your eyes off of me. Yes, Lord. I know, Father God, that as long as I repent, praise God, you will forgive me of my sins. Yes. yes. Father God, the world right now is a crazy place to be in. Yes. But I know that as long as I'm with you and you're with me, Everything will be all right. Yes, it will. So I give my life to you right now, Father right now. God. Yes. And I just say thank you, Father thank God. Thank you. For all that you've done for yes. me, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. Yes. And if you don't do any more, Father God, thank you anyway. Yes, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, right now I know that it's a new beginning with me each and every day. Yes, Lord. That I ask for forgiveness. It's a brand new day, Father God. Yes, Lord. Because I know that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Yes, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, you. for your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, brother. Thank you. If you're out there and you're looking for a Savior, Reverend McIntyre told you what you need to do. Repent of your sins. Choose Christ as your Savior.
accept him and believe that he is able. God is an awesome God who is willing to give his only begotten son that we might have everlasting life into his kingdom. And he told us that we, we just not going to have life any kind of way. We're going to have abundant life. Yeah. And I just love it when I think about abundant life. I ain't always understood it and didn't always know what it meant. Now I know what it means. Yeah. It means that all I have to do is trust in the Lord. I think it's going to be all right. Even when I think things are not all right, yeah. they're going to be all right anyway. Yeah. If yeah. I stay out of it, it won't turn into a mess. It'll work out all right. Yes, yes. But if I get in it and try to try to be God and I can't be him because I have no power. But I can pray to him and I can call on his name. I can believe him and I can know that he will do exactly what he promised us yes. that yes. he would yes. do. That's what my power is. I call on him. I trust him. I talk to him all the time, and that's what we got to do is learn how to be relational with the Lord Jesus. Yes. How we need to learn how to talk to the Holy Spirit, talk to the Father, talk to the Son. Let them know that we know who they are and that we are willing to listen and we're willing to follow them. Yes. Family, we love you. We send out our condolences to a, the Cotton family, which is from the Antioch Church, the loss of the matriarch of that family, Sister Robin Cotton, a loving and beautiful woman who worked hard at the church and did all she could, and she had to go home to be with the Lord. And we just asked the God that we serve that he will bless her children and her entire family for they need all of our prayers and they need the blessings from the Lord. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, as we stand here preparing to close out this service, Lord, we give you all glory and praise. We exalt your holy name for there is none greater than you. And Lord God, you say every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, Lord. I've already done these things, Lord God. Allow those who hear my voice that haven't done them yet, let them, Lord God, bow down to you and let them, Lord God, cry out your name, Lord God. Let their tongue confess, Lord God, that you are Lord and Savior. Oh, Father, do what you do best. Bless your people and keep your people. Be with us, Lord God. Let your spirit have its way. Now unto him that is able to do all things but fail, we ask that your spirit, your awesome and your mighty spirit, your sweet spirit, your loving kindness, your comforting spirit, be with us henceforth and forevermore. In the name of Jesus we do pray. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. God bless you all. Amen. We hope you have enjoyed this broadcast and that it has been a blessing to you. If you would like to contact us for prayer, our on-call ministerial staff at Barnes Memorial Missionary Baptist Church and Antioch Missionary Baptist Church would love to pray with you. Our prayer line is 252-450-5562. Give God a try. Prayer works. Prayer changes things. Just give us a call. God bless. Thank you for participating in worship and giving. Checks and money orders may be written to Barnes Memorial Baptist Church, P.O. Box 693, Whittakers, North Carolina. 27891. If you would like to give by phone, you may give through our phone app, GiveLify. It is available at the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Just download it, select Barnes Memorial Baptist Church, and tap Give. 
Then select your gift amount. Thank you for your generous donations. God bless.